No, I can't hear you. Did you hear me? Salvation Army's muted. I can hear you now. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. <laughs> I was testing with Zoom. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready to go, everyone. Let me go ahead and turn up the volume a bit here. Here we go. Well, uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, February edition of the Mike and Key Amateur Radio Club. Uh, if you could all please rise and uh, face the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and with, uh, and with that, we'll go to our, we'll start with today's program, which will be all about the swap meet, and that'll be given by uh, Mike Dinkelman. Okay, we got a lot of information to go through, and I know Scott wants me to be done on time, so or he'll pull his projectors. So anyway, uh, we got a swap meet coming up. Oh, on the second, on the second. oh go did right you, in. Um, did you activate screen sharing? Did I activate? Talking to Zoom guy. Oh. There we go. It's going to be a little wonky. All right, so we're having a swap meet, if you haven't heard. Uh, next month, March 10th, Friday and Saturday on the 11th. Friday is for setup. The, the event itself is the 11th. Everybody here, or is there anybody here who hasn't ever been to a Mike and Key swap meet? This presentation is for you. All right. So before we st even start, so this this event is critical to the financial well-being of the club. It provides most of our funds. If you think that twelve bucks a year you spend for dues does anything at all, you're wrong. What's really kind of disheartening is we have three hundred members in this club. Right now, there are only eighty folks that have signed up to work this event. We need about a hundred. So, and I do have sign-up sheets over there on the doors there. If you're interested in signing up, or come see me, and uh, and I can do it. All right, on to the good stuff. So our agenda: we're gonna. I'm gonna introduce you to your chairpersons. We're going to talk about the fairgrounds itself and its layout, the pavilion where we hold the event, its layout. We'll review the Friday and Saturday schedules. We'll talk about the worker hospitality suite introduce you to our new chairperson, uh, frequencies and communications, a whole bunch of odds and ends, and there's, there's a really important thing at the end. Hal, if you haven't met him, is our chairperson, overall chairperson, event chair, and he's also our, our interface to the fairgrounds and facilities itself. Uh, are you on, Hal? Maybe not. Okay. Uh, so, 
Next, we have a country store. That's where we do consignment sales. Dan, KG7DAB, is our country chair, uh, uh, chairperson. And uh, you uh, are, we'll talk about it later, but as a worker, you are allowed to put things in the country store commission free. Gary, you're here. I saw you. Stand up. Gary is our pallet crew chair. And uh, he, uh, he wrangles the folks that, uh, that move all the pallets of equipment from the loading dock to the, uh, to the uh, to tables themselves, and then on, in reverse when we tear down in the other direction. You bet. We'll talk a little bit more about that process later. Ivy, you're here. Hi. Ivy is our announcing and talk-in chair. And, uh, the best job of all of Yes. Uh, Jean, please stand up. I don't have a picture for Jean. She's so new. Jean's the kind of people we like. She's only been a member for a couple of months, and she jumped into a chairperson <laughs> slot. So welcome to Jean. Jean's the one who's going to feed you Saturday. So be nice to Jean. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Uh, me, I'm uh, in charge of registration and publicity. So uh, you don't need a picture of me. I'm right here. Tickets, Manfred, you're here. Manfred is in charge of ticket sales on Saturday, so if you feel like going out and helping out, I think he could use a couple more people uh, for ticket sales. You can sign up over there or talk to Manfred. Scott, treasurer. I don't have a picture for you either. Scott is our treasurer, and uh, he handles the money, and uh, he needs a few people to sign up as well, So, uh, and you have to be a club member to to handle money, so uh, anyway, or be vouched by Scott. Our other Scott, VEs, Yay. be doing VE exams. We don't know where right now, but we're flexible. It may be in the expo hall or it may be in a barbecue tent. Who knows? So, inter inter building of some sort. <laughs> so these are the fairgrounds. Uh, this is where we hold our event in the pavilion. This is the gold gate. This is the orange gate. Orange gate is where our vendors come through uh, starting at 2 o'clock on uh, Friday. They'll wind their way up through here. Registration is out here. We have a little building out here. We intercept the folks coming in and uh, give them their registration packets. And then they line up along this uh, particular avenue and unload right here. Hospitality is right here in this Fairview Club building just south of the pavilion. After our vendors unload, they go out the gold gate and park in the gold parking lot. Yeah? Well, that's because the pointers with me, oh, sorry, but anyway, I'm not, I'm not sharing to the, to the Zoom, so sorry. Like the focal eyes kind of wear on the map. Yeah, okay. Yes, the orange gate is to the, the uh, west side of the fairgrounds. The gold gate is to the northeast side of the fairgrounds. That's where the main activity takes place. So, and that's, that's the basic route for setup and for loadout. So people come in the orange gate. They actually start loading up there about 6 o'clock in the morning on Friday. They're lining up in that first two hours after we open up at 2 o'clock. It's just, you know, it's just a madhouse for the first two hours. Then things kind of, and including at the loading dock and everything, then it trails off. So, but we'll talk about the schedule in a little bit here. So. Okay, so that's the fairgrounds. And then a satellite view of what's really important. Uh, down here is the registration building. Down in your lower left for those of you on Zoom. And uh, that's the uh, avenue where people will line up. And uh, they're actually lined up all the way back out to the Orange Gate when it first opened up. And uh, again, here's the pavilion and the building where hospitality is at. And it's a one-way process. So people come in from the west and head out to the northeast. And uh, this year we have a little, the PSRG is going to have a little station out here just at the south of the fountain, a little special event station. So, uh, so that'll be kind of interesting. 
there you go. So, you know, sounds fun. And I appreciate the publicity they've been giving us. So just great. And then this is the pavilion home for the weekend. Any questions so far? Yeah. So for set, that's a good question, and might as well talk about that now. So there's no parking on the fairgrounds, okay? We have a few parking passes for a few folks that need to be on the fairgrounds, but you, everywhere, everybody should be parking out at the gold gate or the gold parking lot to the northeast. So there's a great big, you know, several acres of parking out there. And for setup on Friday, you just come through, we'll have that gold gate open and you just come through, you'll have badges down here at the loading dock that you can pick up, and everybody should be wearing a badge during setup. Will there be a little table for badges? Yes, there, there will be. Room? There's a little area set up uh, that the club sets up. We, we have all our supplies and everything for the pallet crew are down there by the loading dock, and the, the badges will be there, hopefully in alphabetical <laughs> order, though they don't seem to stay that way for very long. So uh, anyway, and then we'll probably have a few blank ones for folks that either didn't sign up or I didn't make a badge or, you know, for, for whatever reason. Okay. Yeah, for the people who like to unload as well, we'll be doing fun. Do we come down and see if we want to No, actually, you can come in through the service gate. So the service gate, I didn't show it there, but it's the green gate. And it's basically at the southwest corner of the, you can just come through there and tell them that you're part of administration. Uh, in fact, some of us will be in there Thursday, and that's the way you come in as well. So just tell them you, they actually give you one of their parking passes, and you can drive in to the site and to the pavilion. Just so. make sure you call. Um, just your yeah. Your sworn yeah. They'll, they'll ask you, so they're pretty nice about it. So, question, they just, Mike. They ask you, are you part of the, the club's, you know, administration and stuff? So, anyway, so yeah, and you could actually just park right here outside this building here. So, on Thursday, question, Mike. Somebody has a question on Zoom. Oh, somebody has a question on Zoom. Yeah, Mike. This is Ross W7ROV. Um, <clears throat> I volunteered for Friday. So my, I'm assuming I come in through the gold gate, and where do I get my badge? It's the south end of the building. There'll be a table there, and there'll be a box full of badges. The south end of the pavilion. Did that go through? Yep. Oh, so... So you, you said the normally I hand them or in the past I have handed them out in February at this meeting to the people that have attended. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just don't have the time right now. So doing registration and everything else, I just want to do them all in one fell swoop uh, in the next couple weeks. So it's really important if you want a badge, please sign up as soon as possible so that I don't have to go back and make up special badges. Yeah. So Ross, the uh, south end of the pavilion is on South Meridian. Right, see, right, right. So you okay, just go down thank to the you. south end of there. And what? I'm just explaining to Ross. Oh, you're explaining something to Ross? Yeah. No, you can't get to the pavilion from Meridian. I understand so, oh, that. Okay. But I'm trying to give him an idea of where it's at. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. Coming through the Gold Gate, south end of the pavilion is where the badges are. The audio has disappeared online. It sure has. 
yeah. we know we're working on it. Changing the batteries for the microphone. Batteries, we're working on it. All right. Can you hear nope. me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, there we go. So where was I? Oh yeah. So we about have uh, on the on the top and the bottom sides in purple. You'll see we have commercial booths and uh, 200 square foot, or sometimes they're half booths. Uh, everybody else is an individual table, uh, and that is the first floor. We have power drops for each set of tables. The customer will have to bring an extension, an approved extension cord to, uh, to actually get access to power. This has been sold out for several weeks. No problem. Yep. Just to point out for the badge. Yeah. So, and it's the same, it's, it's the same thing on the first floor. The badge will be right here. The, the table, it'll, it'll be really obvious to this loading area. The badges will be right here. So, yeah, yeah, first floor, loader, sell out and unload. And see this table right here? It says info right here. That's where the badges will be. So, no problem. Okay. Second floor, uh, country store is to the left, upper left. The information tables like the AWRL, the Federal Way Amateur Radio Club or whoever, uh, we have a set of tables that run along the, the lower left side. The AWRL is this particular uh, set of tables right here if you need to go and talk to them. If you want to put things into consignment, the upper left here, the country store, you can take things up there and uh, fill out the paperwork to do so. You can also get the paperwork online and fill it out beforehand and bring it up with you. Uh, we are, this first row is sold out. The second row is almost sold out. We got a couple or we got a, a few tables left in here, and then I'm hopeful, yeah, that I'm hopeful this will be completely sold out today, and we'll be starting back here on these rows. We may have to get rid of some of the row, the tables at the top if we don't sell out, but we're in far better yeah. shape than we were last year. So, and again, there are power drops. And uh, if you're looking for badges to, or, not, or for stuff to be embroidered, our embroiderer is coming back this year and, and sits up here at Q1 and Q7. So they've been out of business for three years during the pandemic, basically because of the pandemic. So they're, they're happy to be coming back. So how do we get stuff from the first floor to the second floor? We have a, we have an elevator. Oh, I will use a nice term without any objectives to describe it. It's kind of rickety sometimes. It has been known to fail sometimes. Sometimes the door won't work and stuff like that. So anyway, but we, we take, so the, the general process is the customer comes to the loading dock. We provide them a pallet. They load it up, and then we take it, and it's marked, and they have a pallet with their tables. First floor loading crew takes it if it need be otherwise if it's going upstairs it goes in the elevator usually a couple loads at a time and sent upstairs where there's an upstairs pallet crew and they will take stuff right here yeah so yeah why they did not put a pull a full freight elevator in this thing when they because i mean they have shows every weekend of the year but anyway so 
Uh, and there is escalators uh, down in the lower portion here, stairwell and escalators if you want to have opened up. Tear down, the, the system is the same. They come in. <clears throat> we catch them out at registration. We find out their table number. They should have packed their table up before they even went out to get their car. We get their table number. We radio it in. They go get in. The idea is that we will go get, and we, we list the tables as they're coming in. We will grab that table and hopefully meet them at the loading dock when they arrive at the same time. And actually, our pilot crew does a pretty darn good job of doing all of that. Yeah. So we can get everybody out in three hours where it takes a day and a half to get them in. So, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> they don't think so. But anyway, so, uh, all right, that's the layout of the, so. So this is the basic schedule for Friday. Setup is from 8 o'clock in the morning till noon. At noon, we'll feed you. Uh, we'll be doing the table setups. We'll be doing chairs. Announcing will be setting up. Registration will be setting up out, out of registration. At noon, we'll give you lunch. Uh, we get sandwiches from Costco. Uh, we put out a donation jar. You don't have to donate, but we only ask them for a buck or two. You certainly aren't going to get as good a lunch someplace else. And uh, they're just croissant sandwiches and chips and pop and stuff like that. Post lunch, there's still set up to do. I've been talking to Dave about some of the things we need to, to uh, <coughs> check out. Check date. So I used to do set up or, or sort of run that. But since I'm doing registration, Dave, stand up. I should have put you, made you a chairperson. But yes. we, haven't, we haven't raised him to chairperson. I'm looking forward to work. I'm yelling at I'm working with you all. He, he will be the one making sure that I don't know what to do for setup, that Dave can tell you what to do. So we set up, and I'll have pictures of it, uh, tables, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. At 2 o'clock, uh, we let the vendors in. It's a madhouse until about 4 o'clock, and then just kind of, it's a slow dribble after that. It's not too bad. And then at 7.30, we start pushing people out. It used to be a few years ago... We had to push people out. They were just there the whole time. We are all getting so old, including them, that they just sort of self-exit long before. <laughs> so, in fact, I think we could almost get away with closing down at 7:30. But uh, yeah, Ivy. What time is that at? Can you be done at eight? Okay, so because we're going to be pushing people out, so you may be in that building all by yourself. Don't worry, I'll stay. Yeah, Phil will stay with I'll you. Stay with so, yeah, okay, yeah, and go home, get some sleep, or if you're camping out in the the RV camping grounds or something like that, go get some sleep. So, because uh, the next morning comes really early. So that's the basic schedule. <clears throat> so this is what the first floor looks like when we start. And uh, these are actually carts full of tables, and uh, we pull. And then we have some for the booths. We have these wooden barriers between booths and things like that. And uh, that's that's what it looks like. And Thursday, Hal will already have been there and marked out lines on the floor with tape for where the for where the tables go. This is sort of the process: two people pulling down a table. Wear gloves, believe me, because the other people who use these tables throughout the years, they love staplers. Oh, and they don't take them out. So wear gloves. These are not recommended shoes. So wear something that, you know, protects your feet and, uh, and work with somebody because when I started this 30-some years ago, yeah, I could pull a table down and flip one over and, and set it up, but I can't do it anymore. So it's just a lot easier if two folks work together as a team, and uh, it goes pretty quick. And if you don't feel like slipping tables, we've got carts full of chairs that need to be put out as well. How many tables? There are 300 tables on between the two floors, so about half downstairs and half upstairs. So. Bring a staple puller. <laughs> 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 oh, and if the table is rickety, it looks like it isn't going to support 100 pounds of radio equipment, don't use it. 
set it aside. We tell them, hey, that's a bad table. We don't want to pay for a bad table. So set those aside. <clears throat> this is sort of what it looks like when it's done. And we have, you know, if you're not into the tables and stuff, and the physical labor, we've got these sticks here for lining up the tables. There's a specific distance, five feet between the, uh, the tables and ten feet between the rows. So that's how we get this all nice and straight. So we've got these PVC sticks and things like that. So. And we move the, and we also set up the, the booths and, and things like that. You can see announcing is set up down at the far end. That's what the second floor looks like when it's ready to go. So uh, I actually kind of like the second floor better. It's, I think it's lit better and there's more room and space and stuff like that. But there's that nasty, there's that nasty elevator though. Yes. Sometimes it's too warm. Announcing. They have a raised DS or DIAS, I guess you would call it, platform. So and they put tables up there, and they also have the talk-in radio and, and things like that. They also will have, if I can remember to bring them, a hand truck that we can loan out to people for a driver's license. It helps for people to self-deport. So, uh, you know, they want to get out early. They just have a small number of items. Tell them, hey, there's hand trucks at the announcing booth. You can go. But nobody can drive onto the fairgrounds, use the pallets or the pallet jacks until 3 o'clock. So if you want to leave, you're either carrying it out or you're hand trucking it out. So, but. Lunchtime at noon, like I said, we have sandwiches, we have pop, and uh, it's a good break time. And uh, we talk about how it's gone and what things are, have, have left to be done. Yeah? Is, is that the hospitality? Nope. I'll take care of that. So, yeah. So, though if there's anything left, we'll give it to you and you can use it the next day at the hospitality suite. So. <coughs> I understand. Yeah. I think we already chatted about that. So, if you are a vegetarian, Talk to Ivy, and she probably knows where you can you can get some lunch someplace. So, yeah, we open at two o'clock. That's our registration building. We have several folks inside, and then we have runners outside. I really need more help at registration. I do not have enough people for my first shift at registration. We have two registration sites. We've got one out in the middle of the fairgrounds for the Orange Gate people driving in. And then we have one at the walk-in gate. Some people don't need to drive in. They can just walk in and get their packet, and they're happy they've got what they need. So I still need people for both of those uh, stations. So please consider signing up for registration. It's, it's a pretty nice job. But you are outside if it, the weather's bad. Oh, and, and, and as I said, so the people line up. They have a postcard with a name on it. We just take it into the building. They give us a packet. We collect money or distribute refunds as needed. Tell them to put on their hanger and to put on their badges. And they line up. And there's a lineup. Whoops, what happened? There's the lineup to uh, up from registration to the loading dock. The, uh, these pictures are kind of old. They show wooden pallets. We don't have wooden pallets anymore. But uh, there's, we've got a really good pallet crew. You'll notice everybody's wearing safety vests. Again, shoes and gloves. We do not load stuff on the pallets. They load stuff in the pallets. We just move pallets. <clears throat> and tell them, they pile it up this high and you think it's going to move? Or fall, restack your pallets because uh, we don't need any. We don't need to get being blamed for a, a bad stacking job. Uh, just some general. Uh, we won't have ham radio outlet this year. They're having a staffing problem. <coughs> ICOM hasn't come for a couple of years. So again, the announcing and uh, talking with people. So that goes on all day. <clears throat> like I said, till 7:30. We start kicking people out. Frankly, it, it really starts getting kind of slow after six. So, I mean, if you're signed up for the pallet crew or something like that, and you want to leave early, you know, talk to your chair. 
and uh, they may just send you away. I actually will uh, will close down the Gold Gate registration after five o'clock or six o'clock because there's just not enough uh, business to uh, to keep it going. Any questions about Friday? How? Hey, it's good to see you. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. You might have to take over. <clears throat> all right. Saturday, we started all over again at 05 dark 30. So we can get on the grounds at 5 o'clock. The vendors can get on at 5.30. So we give ourselves half an hour to get registration opened up, get hospitality unlocked. <clears throat> if we did it right, we had a timer turn on the coffee at about 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I don't know if Gene's going to get there at 5 o'clock, but we can open up the door and have donuts and, and stuff there. So it uh, shouldn't be a – it's cold, even on a nice – day it's cold at five o'clock in the morning we allow the vendors in at 5 30 we will start selling tickets at eight o'clock those who are signed up for tickets you know you need to be out there at 7 45 so that uh, we can uh, get the, the the cash drawers set up and everything else like that and at 8 30 we shut down the gates because we have to get all the pallets cleaned up and, and taken out of the uh, the aisles, we do clean up. <clears throat> the fire marshal will probably have arrived sometime between 8 and 8.30 to do an inspection. So that's important. So if you see the fire mar marshal, either let me, Hal, or announcing know. And uh, sometimes he comes by and we don't even know until he shows up at announcing and just hands over his sign-off form. So, but <clears throat> anyway. So, and then at 9 o'clock we open the doors and uh, we go, and frankly a lot of us don't have much to do after that point until 3 o'clock, but Country Store is busy, announcing is busy, VE exams are busy, so if after you've walked the aisles 10 times already and you're bored, but you don't want to leave, then, you know, go volunteer for the country store. You don't have to sign up to do it. Just go up there and tell Dan, hey, how can I help? Or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> or go to hospitality. I was just going to mention that. We'll have hot dogs and chili and all kinds of things to eat. And uh, both Gene and Patricia will, uh, will be your hosts. And uh, if it's a nice day, grab a hot dog, go outside and sit in the sun and relax or Something like that. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. There will be a restaurant, yes, at the north end of the pavilion. I don't know what the name of it is now, but uh, yeah, they do sell very high priced food. So, <laughs> the fairgrounds gets its, gets its cut. So, but uh, yes, they do. But only you are allowed to partake of hospitality. You need to be a badge-wearing worker to get there. So uh, that's just for you. Oh, and you can also go and uh, if you really want a greasy hamburger, then you can go to the restaurant as well. So, uh, yeah, another question. No, he does not. <laughs> doesn't even know about it. He only really cares that we've got all of our space between the rows and you can get to the fire extinguishers and the power cords or the right cords and things like that. <coughs> so yes, you do not have to worry about the fire marshal. Yeah, one of the things we always look a lot for and help. The fire marshal will be very concerned that everything, anything is beyond the edge of the tables into those items. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he, he can shut us down until every one of those is put in. So as they as a club member, and you see one, remind that the table the occupier that they have to have it in or we can't open the door. Yeah, so the box yeah. the And announcing will make those yeah. announcements so yeah. yes so. also no guns 
no porno, uh, no generators with gas, preferably no, preferably no generators at all, even emptied out of gas, and things like that. So that's those are the other things that uh, that uh, we don't want. So hasn't been a problem for a number of years. Okay, so but every once in a while we do have a gal who sells jewelry. And we do have Girl Scouts. Nobody else is allowed to sell food except the restaurant and the Girl Scouts. Uh, so, uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, you know, a typical swap meet. And it's a lot of fun. And, but, uh, you know, be sure to take some breaks and, uh, and enjoy the event yourself. I see people at this event that I haven't seen in a year, you know, and things, and I'm, I'm just talking all day, so it's it's a lot of fun. But you're really tired when it's all over. <coughs> Care out. We've had some problems in the past with people get tired and they go home and we don't have enough people to do teardown. I mean, when you're tired and you've got to stack seven or 300 tables, it's really kind of rough. So I'm hopeful this year I had a guy contact me and he's bringing some scouts. And, uh, oh, there. All right. About 10 young kids to throw tables and do things like that. Uh, hand me a service, community service form, and I will sign it gladly. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's good. So that will be helpful. That doesn't excuse any of the rest of you. From <laughs> I'm taking more breaks. This is our 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 our, our ticket booth out front, and uh, you know we have ticket takers as well. <clears throat> we won't have hand stampers this year. The the tickets say, so the tickets they will enter into a drawing. We we have a drawing for like 50 bucks every half hour, and maybe some AWRL donations and things like that. We don't have any major prizes or anything like that. In fact, we have a hard time getting rid of the 50 bucks every hour, right? Yeah. yeah so. <clears throat> yeah. How do people get back in? You keep that stub. Oh. Well, there's the stub they deposit, but you still got the main part of the ticket. So it says retain for re-entry. <clears throat> yeah, someone could go out and hand it to somebody else if you're going to three. If they're that desperate, please come in. You know, so anyway. So, yeah, we got great ticket sellers, and we... Uh, the, the first uh, couple hours are really busy. We have electronic sales and cash-only sales and things like that. So, uh, <clears throat> Like I said, we don't line people up, okay? We just tell them to, to, to mass outside the doors. And at 9 o'clock, we open up all the doors, and everybody just comes in. Otherwise, we'd have five, six lines trying to sneak around and everything else like that. We also, if you're out here and wandering around and you see somebody in a wheelchair or in a walker or something like that, we will actually let them in at 8 o'clock. So just tell them, hey, you know, and with a, with a, with a helper. And, uh, you know, you just go up to them and say, hey, go down to the other end of the pavilion and go in, and uh, you can get a head start on the crowds because once these people get in, they can't get to the tables. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, these doors aren't even locked Saturday morning. So they're just ready to be pushed open. So we do have guards on the doors to keep people from coming in before then. But, uh, yeah, they're not even locked. Issue here. It's really tempting as a worker. i got to go out to the gold gate. I'll just go out through these doors. No, you won't. No, you won't. Walk around. Go, you know, all the way back to the loading gate and just walk all the way back up. You start walking in and out of, okay, there's one exception, but that, that you know, that's the, the money people. But uh, you start walking in and out of those doors and there's no keeping them out. So, yeah, so even though those doors are open, and there's a sign that says that there are no entrances until 9 o'clock. But uh, please do not try to go in and out those doors on Saturday morning. Okay? Good reminder. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> and uh, actually, your uh, PSRG guys will probably be out there, too. They can probably be talking to a bunch of them 
you know, keep them occupied between 8 and 9 o'clock when we open up the doors. <coughs> when we open up the doors, we can get really crowded. So, you know, it's, uh, you get a lot of people down here, down here and upstairs all at once. So it's a madhouse. And uh, it's a lot of fun to watch them come in at 9 o'clock if you get the chance. <coughs> yeah. So, like I said, most of the people, it's, you know, oh, hi, Fred. Hi, Al. I haven't seen you for a year. So it's great. Country Store will be working hard. <clears throat> I would recommend if you have stuff to put in the Country Store as a worker, maybe bring it in Friday and get it up there to them early so they can process it and things like that. You might even sell it before we open up because the vendors will be up there looking at the country store as well. So um, <clears throat> anyway, Sandy, you're here, right? There you are. There's Sandy. So I think she'll be helping out there, Dan. So uh, we will not have a club info table this year. I didn't take that out. And uh, again, there's announcing. And they get questions, and they make announcements, and they, they're handling talk in at the same time. Hospitality, next door in the Fairview Club. Not the, it's the first aid office in the Fairview Club. <clears throat> Jean will be do, organizing. She has help from Patricia. And uh, again, only badge-wearing volunteers. There's some tables in there. If we, you need to eat inside, if the weather is nice, you know, Go outside and enjoy the sunshine. Yes. Yes, there are. Yeah, they're in the back, sort of in the back. Yep. Security. Security died last year. Uh, I don't have enough workers signed up right now to do what I want to do. I, I don't have, I, do, I, I can't waste the manpower. We used to have people walking around and making sure people weren't peeking under tarps and things like that, make sure everybody wears a badge. But <clears throat> they can use those people doing other things. So we no longer have security. We do have two paid guards, so uh, two rent-a-cops. And they'll be what? They'll be, yeah, go ahead. Now. Oh, okay, I'll pick up on that. <clears throat> so we do have two rent-a-cops. One we keep out of the tickets. Another one just sort of, you know, wanders and, and does things that we ask them to do. So, But uh, right now we do not sign up people to run security. We just don't have the manpower. Uh, Hal mentioned bathrooms. Like there, there are bathrooms in hospitality. There are, the bathrooms are on the south end of the pavilion, which was on the right-hand side of the two layouts that you saw. <clears throat> there's there's a set downstairs and a set upstairs. There's also bathrooms out at the Gold Gate. Those are actually nicer and, and pretty warm, but it's a long ways to hike. Uh, if you're working for registration, I'm sorry. you got to hike into the pavilion if you want to use the bathrooms. But we do have a go-kart, so uh, we can give you a ride in and back out. So. Any other bathrooms we need to worry about? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, if we do the exam. Ah, yes, so the exams may be, yeah, okay, very good. Yep, so maybe put a little sign up that says, do your business before you take exams, yeah. Yeah. We, we just talked to them. I, I don't think it'll be a problem. It never has been a problem yet. Most of them don't even know that hospitality exists. So, yeah. You're in a whole different building and, you know, sort of behind the garbage cans. And, yeah, so, yeah. This is what hospitality looks like. This is our room. So, and, uh, you know... Uh, Michelle used to, to set up a sandwich station and things. We're, we're not quite that uh, elegant anymore, but, you know, got lots of snacks and stuff, and uh, 
usually put hot dogs and chili back here on these tables and, and things like that. So there's plenty of room. It's a nice, well-lit facility. And, uh, and as Michelle has found, there's a cot that you can uh, lay down on if you want. To, so. <coughs> and you even got your own fire extinguisher. So. Frequencies. So we are a radio uh, club. These are the frequencies used by, uh, by the organizing committee and announcing and the country store. And uh, you can make note of that or send me an email later. I think uh, Ivy also has these frequencies written down. <coughs> Security do no longer has, you know, they had a secret frequency that, that they used. So uh, registration, we got a lot of non-hams. So we actually use family service radios and stuff out there. And frankly, administration, we pretty much use phones most of the time anyway. So. Uh, it's just quicker. But we used to have telephones that we, we, we would set up at the major entrance points and announcing and things like that. Unfortunately, like security, we don't have the, the people to set that all up. We have to set it up before we can even put down tables and things like that. So uh, we tried last year without the telephones. And frankly, it worked pretty well. So uh, we're going to continue to go on with that. <clears throat> there will be talk in on the on the uh, on the repeater. Are you turning off the? Uh, nope. You, you keep on the PL. Okay. I'm just asking. So there was a time we turned it off. I'm an old guy. <laughs> I'm an old guy. Any questions about radios and? Oh, and there has been some nasty things out there that interrupt or interfere with two meters at times. I don't know if you had problems last year. Uh, we'll break your squelch. So there's just stuff. Uh, Dave, any uh, information on the Wi-Fi? It worked. It's still there? I used it. When? It's called Fair Guest. No, no. It was a week ago. Oh, good. OK, that's good. Well, All right. Yeah. All right. No, that's fine. Yeah, but there is there is Wi-Fi out there. So, okay. <clears throat> so odds and ends. Some of this we've already talked about. Gloves and hard toe shoes, please. You don't need anybody getting hurt. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I love getting those things that they wear your waistbands. You know, with the your back supports. Man, it works great when you're. You're uh, tossing, you know, 150 tables around and stuff like that. So, you know, do whatever you need to, to keep yourself safe. Park in the gold light, right, go, work mouth. Park in the gold lot on Friday. Do not try to park on the fairgrounds. Every year I got to kick off cars at 2 o'clock or starting at 1 o'clock because somebody decided to park and then I can't find them. So uh, it's better to you park in the gold lot and walk through for setup for the majority of you. The weather, we've had near snow, we've had plenty of wind, we've had plenty of rain, we've had really nice, beautiful sunshine days. So who knows what it's going to be. But uh, just be aware that it can be really nasty. You are eligible for door prizes as a worker. You can go up to announcing and get a ticket and throw it in the bin. So. Maybe you could win the 50 bucks. You could sell at the country store, commission free. And everybody, again, should have a badge during setup hours. And, and, you know, we used to have security do the challenging. Don't be afraid to say, hey, where's your badge? And if, I'll talk a little bit about that. So, <clears throat> so this is probably really important to remember. All we really have to sell is our service. I mean, we're not selling anything. We're not selling equipment or, you know, anything else. We're providing tables and a space and sort of, and hopefully a friendly environment for our customers. <coughs> we have a great reputation. Year after year, I talk to these people, and man, you guys are organized. You do the best job. I think we were the first ones to use the idea of providing pallets for people so they didn't have to truck their stuff all in by hand and everything else. 
And as long as we can get them in and out quickly, they seem to be pretty happy about this. <clears throat> Smile. Be courteous. Be helpful. Don't get mad. Don't get confrontational. They're just as tired as you are, you know, after two days and can be short, you know. Just walk away. If it's a problem you can't handle, there's me, there's Hal, or Ivy can figure out where we're at to get a hold of us. So just walk away. Don't get mad. There's no, there's no reason. It's just a habit, a hobby, and, and we're just here for fun. And most important of all, though, while you're down there, just remember to have fun. That's part of what this is. It isn't just to make money. It's to have fun. And if this event disappears, either because of a lack of support or we can't afford it in the front, there's gonna, it's going to be a major loss of the community because this is a really popular event. And as you can see, we do have smiling people. Come on. He's he's regretted doing that ever since. He act that was actually a put on him. He just did that. And up on our website, we've got 20 years of pictures if you want to go through them. That's that's you've seen just the bare minimum of the. We even got pictures from 1985 when we were in the expo hall. So uh, you'll see some really young looking people there. But uh, yeah, there's lots of pictures you can look at over the years and they're all available on the club, uh, club sites. So any questions, something I didn't cover. Uh, Dave, you were first. <clears throat> yes, Catlin's or whatever is no longer a restaurant across the street. I don't know if you could park there. I wouldn't take the chance. Oh, they got fences up now? Okay. Gil. Yeah. One thing that we can do, like we said, he says there's no security whose responsibility works, no TP taken. But as a member, we request no TP taken. You know, our customer has covered his table. And that includes us. So just because you're a worker doesn't mean you get to peak either. So there's plenty, there's plenty of opportunities to see the stuff coming in the door and make an offer or find a table number or something like that. I don't know what your experience of doing that before. It's been sort of poor because uh, you have to <laughs> well, all right. and all he's got to do is say, you know, I, I, think, I think they would be happy that we're, we're uh, doing this business. Okay, anybody else? All right. Again, we've got about three more weeks here to sign people up. And uh, i got some really, if I can't fill some of these holes, I'm going to grab people from other areas and drag them out to registration or something else. So, because... We can't hold an event if we can't get people in and we can't get them loaded in. I don't care if we can't talk to them on announcing or, or something else like that. For, so uh, it would just be better that having 300 members in this club, you would think that we could get maybe 20 more people. So, All right. Thank you very much. And uh, it's all yours, Phil.